Welcome, this is the introductory video of the mass flow calorimeter um, that uh, I've been building in my lab for the past uh, 10 months already. And um, I would like to present to you the different um, component of it and um, how, how this is built, um, how this is meant to work and what we're aiming at. Flow calorimetry is meant to uh, measure the quantity of energy, net energy, uh, coming in and coming out of the system to differentiate the two, to subtract the two, and uh, to give um, um, a thermodynamic um, yield given by reaction. And it's typically the kind of um, equipment um, cold fusioners uh, have been building over the time. So this is the chamber where everything goes in. Here it's uh, dismantled and you will see the other part of the system that uh, is uh, meant to go exactly in, the reaction chamber and so on. So here we have uh, the CF100 flange uh, where all the system is built upon. Uh, this part has been presented already uh, for a previous blog post, so you you can you can link um, can go to this um, to this link below. It will show you the article presenting uh, uh, this part uh, given by Jean-Paul, and I've been building the rest of it um, around that part. So here is the holder that um, sustains the system at uh, almost uh, half the height of the system. Um, the chassis is built entirely with uh, aluminum bars. Um, this is very easy to assemble and uh, to um, make a chassis out of it. Um, there is stainless steel on the top, on the side, on the bottom, on the back, and on the front. The door um, is uh, laser cut and uh, welded and assembled. Um, on proposed to have insulated um, insulation all in. So here we have four centimeters of insulation as well as everywhere on the, the chassis. So the system has a water inlet that goes by this route. Um, this is a PT100 RTD sensor. It's a temperature sensor. It's um, very highly precise. I'm gonna turn on the light for you to have a better view. Uh, this goes right in into this tube and even inside uh, the metallic bar here. This is the water inlet. The water outlet is going out from that size. So here again we have insulation and with the aluminium surrounding um, we have another RTD that is reading the temperature out of the system and uh, the water is uh, escaping the, the, um, the chamber. On the back here we have um, voltage readings, temperature readings with uh, thermocouple readings only. Um, the RTDs are going back and then to the chassis. Uh, the system is supplied with uh, vacuum inlet, I mean outlet, and uh, gas inlet. This is a flexible, it allows me to um, um, adapt the system because I can change only the flange here and then um, I can use another experiment. It's not only uh, meant to um, replicate Chilani's experiment. Uh, on the back here we have an um, aluminum resistor. Um, on it um, you can see there are surface resistance uh, mounted on it. And this is uh, meant to regulate the temperature inside this um, envelope. Uh, what else do we have? The temperature sensor is placed on the aluminum uh, surface here and is, um, is surrounded by an aluminum um, tape. Um, on the bottom um, of, the, of the chassis we have the water inlet that is inside in, in another insulation. We have the vacuum manifold where here we have um, a hot cathode 
um, uh, sensor, um, few valves. Um, the system is uh, entirely supplied by a turbo pump. Uh, here we have the cryostat that is supplying uh, very precise temperature water inside the system. Water is moved by a um, fluid metering uh, pump, which is a uh, uh, piston pump. Uh, the water is taken from the, um, the reservoir here. It goes inside the pump, goes back inside um, um, a heat exchanger because the pump tends to heat up a little bit the temperature of the, of the water. So we go back into a heat exchanger and then we go straight to the inlet of the flow calorimeter. Um, the out output temperature is set to have uh, the same value as the temperature inside the chamber. So on top here we have the controller for the uh, turbo pump. The PID uh, that is meant to um, regulate the temperature inside the chamber. Now I'm gonna set it back to the right temperature for the chamber to heat up. Here we have the um, cold cathode um, gauge controller. Here it's the um, intermediate uh, vacuum chamber. So we are pulling uh, vacuum from this uh, hose and uh, it pulls vacuum literally inside here. And there is another chamber that goes in and um, that is the reaction chamber when everything goes in. So we uh, vacuum insulate the system in order to have um, better stability. So on the back here, we have a lot of people <laughs> um, we have here um, shunt resistance to measure uh, high current um, input, electrical input. Here we have um, Dave Jones microcurrent um, gold measurement uh, system. Um, that's the back of the power supply. Um, we have here um, another power supply that is um, controlled by the PID controller here. Uh, this actually gives the power to the to the surface resistance uh, that heats up the room. I mean the here we have the gas manifold. Um, so here comes the hydrogen inlet with the gas bottle that connects uh, here. It's a Lindy hydrogen mini can. Uh, we have uh, three uh, bell valves, uh, fully stainless steel. Um, so one is for the hydrogen, one another is for the calibration gas. Here it's um, the hydrogen bottle we can, we can see here. Um, down there we have the vacuum um, line connected through a T here and going to the vacuum manifold. Here we have a valve that allows to prevent hydrogen from coming back into uh, the vacuum insulation chamber, uh, whereas here we have uh, just a bevel um, tube uh, to connect the, the system and to vacuum the, uh, the chamber. So the T here we have the main chamber valve, the pressure gauge that goes behind, and here we have the inlet that goes right into the into the main chamber uh, of the bench. Here we have the National Instruments chassis. Uh, this is a very good chassis. It gives a uh, few RS-232 to control instruments, uh, controllers, uh, the vacuum controllers, for instance, uh, all kind of things. Uh, high accuracy DMMs, digital multimeters, um, plus minus 10 volts measurements, um, and the RTD inputs. This is thermocouple input for um, down there, and that's the CPU and um, uh, operating system running in the back. Uh, here it's an uh, industrial power supply that gives um, um, plus minus 12 volts as well as 24 volts. Uh, it's meant to supply all kind of um, pressure transistor, um, uh, all kind of instruments that needs have some simulation. 
Um, this is the differential uh, voltage measurement. Uh, we can actually configure it, and it's heavily configured right now. I'm doing, still doing some tests. Mm. So we have a shunt resistor here that are filtered with, um, I think it's probably propylene uh, capacitors and a low noise uh, voltage resistor. Uh, that is all meant to average uh, with proper uh, low pass filter the signal from the different instruments. Uh, here we have from the microcurrent, you can see the, the it's, it's um, a sheathed, um, copper sheathed uh, um, wire. So the, the, the sheathing is, um, the sheath is ground, grounded, yes. And it goes to the microcurrent. It's very important because a little bit of noise will be obvious and the bandwidth of the microcurrent is so high that uh, it tends to add a lot of um, noise to the system. Here we have um, the pressure gauge that is also filtered with a low pass filter. Uh, I've been doing quite a lot of tests on this on this place. You see resistors everywhere. It's uh, it's quite nice to have that because you can really treat with analog uh, signal um, compensation and and all kind of things to make a good signal. Um, so we enter. Um, the chamber with this um, uh, gearbox, uh, we have uh, RS232 in and out. Uh, I don't use it right now, that's the vacuum cable which is special to MKS, provider of the vacuum gauge. Um, it goes from the shunt resistor above and that's the power supply inlet. Um, we have all kinds of measurements and uh, we tend to measure the a voltage very close to where the junction is. Uh, what else can I show? And on the back here we have um, the back metal of the conical junctions and the, uh, the back metal as well, the voltage measurement uh, from inside the bench. So I open the, the light, I mean the window. So here we have the trouble pump. It's, um, it's a uh, quite low but extremely reliable um, Alcatel pump. Uh, it's MDP 5011. Uh, it took me two years to find this model. And um, it's a whole dry system. So I use um, an oil free uh, roughing pump that is uh, good enough to pump the roughing. I use a silicon hose in order to avoid. Um, mechanical vibration from the roughing pump to go up which is good and very I was suspecting it was not good enough but it's actually very good for for this um, vacuum pump and the turbo pump goes to 27,000 ter turn per minute and uh, it's called by the little computer fan that is here and uh, also it's everybody told me it's not a good idea to use only a small fan like that but it works very well. I was surprised to see that. Okay, now you can see from the other side the vacuum um, system. Um, I, I I reserved another um, valve up there uh, to be able to connect something else if I want to use that vacuum line for the other side of the bench. So here we have the internal power of the mass flow calorimeter. We find this uh, CF100 uh, flange that um, I've been um, using as a support for the rest of the system. So I built upon all this. Um, I did a custom system to hold that thing vertically why I can work on it. So on the back of it, uh, we can retrieve most of the connections that are inside the flow calorimeter, um, the bench. So here we have the gas uh, inlet outlet. Here we have the vacuum outlet. Here we have the MKS uh, vacuum gauge. Uh, it goes right into the intermediate chamber. Here we have the electrical feed throughs and we have eight wires uh, going in and out. Um, sorry for the color code. Uh, one broke. 
uh, here we have thermocouples that goes right into the chamber and give a temperature of inside the chamber. Uh, so on top of it, I've decided to use um, Teflon poles uh, to hold another metallic flange. Uh, Teflon is able to go to 300 uh, volt, uh, 300 degrees, sorry, uh, degrees C of temperature, and um, it's also very good at. Um, uh, it's very easy to machine. Uh, I've done a video actually of the machining of that at some point. I'll publish that. Now you use a ceramic um, connectors for the electrical uh, feed-throughs um, here. So we have many of those. I'm, I'm you know, as I um, redo them because they're leaking or as I um, redesign the whole thing, I'm changing to use a color-coded um, uh, sheath, which is pretty convenient. Here we have uh, thermocouples, so we have two thermocouples going in inside the chamber. Actually, one only is going inside the chamber. Uh, the other one is measuring the temperature of the flange, so it's on that surface here, but very inside. It's um, meant to give a, a trigger and a signal, like an alarm noise. When this flange reaches 300 degrees, it means this is going bad, because at 300 degrees it, it tends to um, you know, melt or even vaporize some uh, hydrofluoric acid. I would prevent that. So, because it's only for the Chilani system, um, and it acts as a very good insulator, I decided to measure uh, and uh, make sure that uh, this flange is not reaching 300 degrees. All the feed throughs here, inside, outside, and so on, they're all um, ceramic holded. Um, glued with um, high quality NASA uh, Epotec uh, epoxy which is able to run for a very long time at very high temperature it's also very good at vacuum it's uh, low it's, uh, low degassing they say yeah. here it's the chamber so it's uh, the same size as the Chenlani chamber so we can pull that off so here at the very end of it I've welded uh, well it's difficult to see here mm, well there is a holder on the very bottom of it so that's the system we find back the mica system um, with the holder we have the wire going in and out um, we have some bridges that I installed uh, two days ago in order to um, do a very precise um, voltage measurement of the test wire. This uh, will help a lot when we want to measure the resistance uh, variation of uh, the Chilani wire while, while we are heating that up under hydrogen. So it's pretty much it. We have uh, connectors here with uh, crimped uh, connectors so I can unscrew that nut here and pull the whole thing out. This is Mako um, connector. It meant to hold the crimp, crimped system that goes um, inside and prevents shortings because Mako is a uh, glassy material and uh, it's not conductive. Uh, what else? So yeah, I can I can screw that nut, take the whole thing out, and put back another uh, system uh, that I would design for another um, test I want to make. Uh, it took me a long time to do all the parts. That's a custom custom um, welded uh, flange. Uh, it was just not possible in the industry to find a flange able to feed through gas, electrical, uh, six wires, actually eight wires electrical plus one or two thermocouples. So I just had to do it myself and it took a really long time. Calculate the right angles for the VCRs. Everything is exchangeable, by the way. So we can reuse that for any kind of experiments. 
Anyway, um, that's pretty much it. I hope you liked it. Um, let me know if you have any comment. Sure. Thank you for watching.